Okay, I'm Maria here, back with another video, and I am making this video for therapeutic purposes only. <laughs> so I won't be bombarding people with this in an email or anything, but uh, uh, so I'm, I'm uh, trying to calm down. I wake up in the morning consumed with anxiety. I get up around 3 o'clock every day consumed with anxiety, worry, um, fear, um, uh, and uh, it, it can get a little over overwhelming. I did send my older sister a text message basically telling her to go to hell and that goes for the rest of my siblings. Um, I am going to make this video a public declaration of me disowning my three siblings as well as their spouses and their children and their children's children. Time for me to move on, okay? They cause too much pain, too much hurt. And you know, it's so funny when people have a guilty conscience. Now I'm gonna w I'm gonna walk away from them. I don't want them to think that I hate them. It's just that some people can cause so much trauma um, that it's just better just to move on. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, so you know, the, when you re when you contact perpetrators or people who you used to know with videos explaining your situation, um, you can pretty much tell who's guilty just by the response. Now, I wanted to talk about the three perpetrators that are outside of my family with their response. Now, this one particular person and his consort, I uh, didn't work with them, but I kind of did, okay? I kind of did in a way because these, these two individuals um, had it, handled some of the auditing of the work that I did, okay? So, you know, previous to the email that I received from this, this firm, um, they know that I have had problems. Uh, with employment. They know that I have been uh, harassed in the community. So for them to make a request saying don't contact me seems a little cold-blooded. It shows that they really don't have uh, any concern. I mean, not to say that I don't even know these people very well, but still you would think that somebody that you come in contact with, you know that they're going through these hardships, um, that you would you would expect a, a much more um, uh, kinder kinder, more gentler response to that. And the same goes for the um, so-called employment guru as well. She also made it a um, point to say not to contact her. And this is a woman who boasts, you know, that she graduated from a Christian college. You know, she's supposed to be, I, I would think that these individuals are supposed to be God-fearing people, as well as my siblings. Um, and my, my brother, his response was, who is this? Like, he just long, you know, took my phone number out of his uh, cell phone, I guess he was expecting me to have be dead by now. So these people are the end. I, I'm done with these people and I'm moving on, okay? This is a pain that has been in my life for a very long time and I do realize that my life would have been so much better had I not have had any association with them whatsoever. I am, however, going to continue um, my relationship with my mother. That is my mother. And I don't... Uh, want to um, ever have any animosity bet be, uh, between her and I. Um, she is the woman who gave birth to me, so I have to respect her. I don't know. I think maybe she could have done better as far as raising her children. But you know what? It's a trial and error thing, and I think, hey, you know what? She kept me, uh, filled, she gave me food. She provided shelter. I always had plenty of nice holidays. I had plenty of clothes to wear. And you know what? Sometimes that's the best you can do, and I, and I'm, I'm I have to be grateful for that. Um, but as far as my siblings, I, I really don't want to have anything to do with them. I am going to disassociate from them, and it's too bad, you know, because I never realized that they were the way that they were. And um, I mean, I knew they were a little. My sister was a little competitive, but I never thought it was just you know that out of control, which is and it is just out of control. Uh, so you know, I just want to walk away in peace. Uh, I want to make sure that if they have something or did something that took something from me, that it, it lays the way that it is, um, meaning that uh, if my work, my philosophies or whatever, they're mine, okay, if, if, if that's even the case. I don't know if they have profited from any of my work or not, but, you know, um, I would expect them not to um, because, you know, I have been the kind of person who... Uh, has, I mean, I'm not even sure if that's even the case, okay? I do know a lot of times when people get mobbed and get blacklisted, um, sometimes 
that could very well be a reason. That, that does happen to a lot of people. I've seen a lot of stories like that. And I'm not sure if that's the case, or they're just pissed off because somehow or another their little sister who struggled in, who was bullied by them in school and bullied um, with them as, as a child, you know, didn't do good in school. And now I realize the reason why I felt so subconscious and comfortable in school is because I was an outcast by default. They made it that way, and I never felt comfortable in school, so I didn't go. Um, so they thought that, um, you know, by uh, destroying my life as a child, that I was going to end up with nothing. You know, which, of course, they manipulated that situation to be the case. But the fact of the matter is, I think my, my oldest sibling is probably wondering, well, how is it that you did that when you, you had problems in this particular grade? Well, you know what? A lot of people have issues in school when they were a kid. And my, my issue was bullying. Uh, bullying. I didn't really want to be there. I mean, why would you want to be there if you don't feel like you belong? So, um, but, you know, and it's not that I didn't have a, a passion for learning. I did learn. I mean, I, I, I actually was a good student for many years. And then there were certain years where I just felt really disconnected. And, and then some years it just, you know, um, I did, it, was, it kind of fluctuated. You know, and then, of course, I got into high school and things just really went to hell. But whatever the case is, I do realize that I can think clearer without my family. And, um, you know, this is, this is where I am now. And I, I, uh, it, it, I feel bad because they manipulated so much of my life, you know, behind the scenes and then coming around with this little smile on their face thinking I, I really trusted them. I never thought in a million years that my family would do this to me. Never, never. But anyway, moving along, it's time, it's time for me to, um, you know, start looking forward to meeting new people. I mean, I do want to meet new people. I do think that there is so much to learn about workplace mobbing, gang stalking, and just being a better human in general. I mean, like, you know, uh, you know, um, I, I hate to use the word behavior modification, but, you know, I just, you know, reforming reforming how we, you know, uh, our, our behavior and, and realizing how we affect each other is so important, you know, and um, this is, you know, really important in schools and in workplaces because so many people miss out on opportunities because of bullying, you know. I often wonder what my life would have been like had I been raised without my siblings. I think I would have turned out a lot better um, as far as me um, having a better, much more fulfilling social life or, or whatever, but um, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I have always been kind of quirky, but I have often wonder, you know, was it my family egging it on? And I do believe, and I, I, pretty, I can confirm that this is the case in the workplace, okay? Um, anyway, whatever the case is, it's behind me now, and I, I'm, I'm making it very clear that I don't want them having anything to do with my life. Um, they don't need to interfere in my life. They don't have any input or say about what I do for a living and who I associate with. And I'm done with that. And, and I, I have been so depressed. Uh, and they've seen it. They've seen me depressed. They've, they've known that I've been depressed. I remember asking for their help, you know. And, you know, when, they, when you find out they're not helping, I'll tell you what, if, if one of my, if, if my siblings, called me up and said, you know, I'm, I'm, I suspect I've been blacklisted, I would be on the phone trying to help them out right away. And for them to respond the way that they did, it, it just seems, you know, cold and distant. But at this point, I want to just drop it, I want to move on, and I don't really ever want to hear from them or see them ever again. And do, do all I have memories of them, you know... Yes and no, you know, but I can't dwell on the past anymore, and I have to move forward. It's a part of my healing process. And so my, my healing would be, number one, to get back to work and start to socialize with other people and to, uh, you know, get back with my goals. That's what I want more than anything. And I've been, you know, really trying to get back to my, my life, you know. Just, you know, I'm very, I'm very content you know, living where I'm living, um, what I mean by that is I can live anywhere, but, you know, I, I, I love coming home and being with, with Joel, and, you know, it was nice when my son came over uh, and visited for a few days, that was really nice, and I enjoyed that, 
and I'm hoping that I could have, you know, more of that, um, that, you know, hopefully my son will come down a little bit more, and so we can spend more time together, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very content in my life, and, um, I, I just, right now, I just want to get back to work, and I want to forget everything, and, and really, when a person has experienced workplace mobbing, the best thing for them to do, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, okay, but I do know that a lot of people who, who've gone through this do develop forms of agoraphobia, you know, meaning they don't want to uh, go out and socialize with anyone anymore. That, it really isn't the case with me. I do have to be very careful about who I socialize, but I do want to um, talk and, and have conversations and, and work and, and work as a team and develop goals and, you know, work, at, you know, ha uh, focus my goals in work-related issues, but, um, you know, as far as, um, um, what was I going, where am I going with this, yeah, I, I mean, at, oh, yeah, agoraphobia, I, it would have been so much better for me had I just not have been off from work this long uh, of a period of time, that created even more anxiety and fear, and, 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 and then, the, the bogus job that was selected for me um, as being the customer service type job um, really, really hit me hard. I mean, it hurt, it hit me so bad um, and, and sent off, you know, major waves of depression. Um, it, it's like, you know, the, the collective is a group of people who have dehumanized me too long and, and I don't want to deal with it anymore. I, I'm done. So, you know, like I said, I want these people to verify my references and leave me alone. Uh, I need to heal. I need to get on with my life. Um, it's time that I forget about, you know, you know, cherishing people that really haven't done me any good. And it, it, it's better for me to um, pick up now and take all the things that I've been wanting to do and do it, you know, and hopefully I can find the right people, you know. Um, I definitely want to get more involved with women issues. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right place to do it. Will I have to look for people online? I'm not sure. You know, I, I don't know. But, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things, you know, social issues that I'd like to get involved with that I feel very um, stuck and limited. But, you know, I think that's going to have to be sometime in the future. Right now, my, my, um, my issue is getting back to work and getting on with my life. I have a lot of bills to pay. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm, you know, I'm trying really hard to uh, figure out how I'm going to pay my utility bills, how I'm going to pay rent, how I'm going to pay for my car payment. I mean, I have the money this month, but things are very, very difficult for me. And it's like, you know, these people who did what they did, they don't want to cop up a dime. They really don't. And they really should. They should be, because they're the ones who are responsible for keeping me out of the workplace, you know, um, I didn't do, I didn't put myself in this situation, I really didn't, and for them to basically create all of this, um, I feel as though it's their responsibility to fix it, because like I said, I can, I can show proof that I did everything I could to get out of this situation, it's not fair, it's not fair at all, but, um, you know, I'm doing the best I can to get, to get work, um, I've applied at, another agency that I never even existed. So, you know, I realize that this is a test, and I'm assuming that they give everybody the test. I mean, most agencies do. It's a standard protocol, but, you know, I, I've gotten to the point where I'm just getting literally nervous, and that's one of the reasons why I make this video. Nervous because, you know, when I, the last job interview I went to in Shafter, um, and I do, I mean, I really do feel as though when I deal with these people, that I'm dealing with racism, you know, I don't see it any different, when I have to encounter these people, I don't see it any different than me encountering somebody from the Ku Klux Klan. Um, by bringing me into a, um, an office, especially when I'm limited on funds, I mean, I don't have money to drive all around town, you know, to, to, uh, I don't have it, I don't have it, you know, I don't have the time, the money, or the um, the resources. What I mean by that is, I don't want to have to deal with racism. I don't, and I shouldn't have to in, in 2016. So when somebody calls you in to go for a job interview, 
and they have no intentions of hiring you and then asking you to take a test knowing that they're wasting your time uh, after you just did a video stating that you don't want that to happen, that's racism. It is. It's racism. So, and I don't want to have to deal with that anymore. Um, and I do think that, you know, companies should have some sort of proof that each person in their employee has taken a test because other than, and I think the, the um, an applicant has the right to ask that. Do you have proof? And it could say, you know, the hire date of the person as well as the test date that they took the test, I personally think, because that way they can't be, dis they can't, they can't be guilty of discrimination, okay? And, and it's not, this is not me trying to, you know, create problems or, um, or, uh, or anything. It's just that, you know what, nobody wants to go into a job interview with that in the back of their mind. And so by employers having, you know, some sort of reference sheet stating, you know, um, this person, you know, the per maybe the first name, the first initial, last name, date of hire, date of test taken, and then, you know, some sort of proof, you know, because you, you don't want to give them too much information because you don't want to disclose personal information, but there should be, and, there, you, and it could be structured in a completely different way, but there should be some sort of proof that everybody takes those tests because other than that, um, otherwise, you know, you could be being discriminated against, and you should know. You should be able to know if you're being treated fairly or not. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I took, I'm, I'm it, you know, it, there's a test that she gave me. It, it, it was the very last question. I'm going to hurry this up. The very last question was like a, um, it was like a uh, very subjective answer. Like you could, you could answer it basically any other way. And it was one that I guess you really couldn't judge or base it on. I do know that, it, I guess, I think the, the question was, when it comes to a business, what is the most important thing? And it was like integrity, sales, profitability, or whatever. And, you know, I was so sick and tired and really pissed off about being asked to take the test anyway after I just did a video on this subject. And um, I just felt like I was just being played with, and it was just very emotional for me. But in my opinion, integrity is always the first thing. Integrity. Because if you have integrity, people will trust you. And when people trust you, they're more likely to come back. And um, as a returning customer, and your integrity, if you have integrity, not only are you going to be um, thought well of by your customer base, you're also going to be able to retain more employees um, that way, especially if you're honest and upfront in your dealings. Now, I know that there are certain things that um, some employees or people in, in or outside the organization are not supposed to be privy to, but as far as... Um, uh, you know, you, you, you have to be, um, conduct business in an ethical manner, and that's important, you know, because, you know, in my case, I, I in, the, in the companies that I've worked for, especially the ones that my family has arranged or whatever, um, just the whole situation um, did not show me any signs of integrity. And I wanted to look up the word integrity. I mean, I know what it means, but I just really wanted to, uh, integrity. I wanted to go over the the definition of it. Um, we all know what it is, but I I think it would be better for me to just kind of say integrity. Yeah, I got one of these old-fashioned uh, dictionaries. <laughs> uh, okay, it says um, imp unimpaired, condition soundness completeness, honesty, and sincerity. And, yeah, I mean, that's, that's important because when you're upfront and honest and fair with your employees, they have an opportunity to excel. Um, they have the opportunity to grow, and they don't feel slighted by their company, so they're going to work harder, and they're going to feel much more um, comfortable, and they're going to know that they have some sort of hope and footing to grow in the company. As far as the customer base is concerned, you know, if you are good and fair in your products and your services, you'll have those customers return, okay? And of course, you know, sales and profitability, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, but, you know, relating to expenses and too, but, I mean, you have to include that as well. But if you have a good product and you are fair and honest, and respectful with your customers as well as your uh, internal 
uh, group of employees, um, that makes a difference. It really does. And I think a lot of people really don't think about what, what uh, the meaning of certain words. Like I went to an electrical place and the lady, I was trying to apply for an HR position, you know, and she had me call, come in and she wasted my time, you know, another one of those racist baiters. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sitting here talking to her and she shows me her mission statement and it's talking about integrity. That's not integrity. It's not integrity. And it's, um, and when I say racist, you know, I, I don't want people to get offended by it. It's just what it is, you know, and unfortunately, I'm, I have to deal with a lot of it, and I don't, I wish it would just stop, but, you know, if, please understand that I have a right to have a job, okay? If you don't want me to work with me, don't call me in for a job interview. It's that simple, okay? Because I don't see it any different than burning a cross in my front yard. I really don't. There is no difference, because um, the way I look at it is, is that it's, it's threatening my life. It is. I mean, I'm in a very um, stressful situation, okay? I'm, I am broke. I have no money. Literally, I have no income, none whatsoever, okay? And I'm basically living on commodities, okay? I, I'm just boiling some eggs that we received from a charitable organization, okay? And so when people are asking me to waste more money to meet with them um, when I don't have it, um, it is life-threatening. It is life-threatening. You, you're dangling my life in, in front of my face, and and they enjoy it. Much like those old pictures of lynch, lynching people, you know, uh, after church on Sunday with the smiles on the face. I'm dealing with some of that right now, okay? Not saying everybody in this town is like that, but I am dealing with that right now, and I'm not comfortable with it. So please be mindful, be respectful, and, and don't waste people's time, okay? If you don't like certain people of certain races, then don't deal with them. I mean, you know, you don't. Don't deal with them. I mean, there's no point in doing it. But I will tell you that, you know, this black woman is did, does well on accounting tests. This black woman is good at her job. And you don't have to, you know, um, continually test me uh, because you're in, in denial of that fact, you know. So, anyway, for that lady... And her uh, her boss or whatever, and I, I want to forget about that experience and any other experience where I've wasted my time. I want to focus on positive job interviews. I don't have time and I don't have money to play games. So, but I am nervous, and that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video because I do realize I have a job search and I need to get it on, get on with it, and I don't want to have to deal with it anymore. It's, it's very draining. And I don't want to be um, confronted with racism anymore. I don't want to deal with it, you know. So um, I do believe that people have the right to be separatists if that's what they choose to be. Um, but most of the time, well, I wouldn't say most of the time, but some separatists look at it like, um, you know, I would just rather not, you know, intermarry or talk with you or whatever. I could live right next door to a separatist. That's totally fine with me. I just don't have to deal with them. I just don't. You know, and I'm mindful of that. That's their right as Americans. You know, they, they can do that way if they want to, okay? But when it comes to employment, um, you can't show and be obvious about it. You just, you just can't, okay? And that's where it becomes wrong. So, anyway, I'm going to close up this video, and I'm going to take a couple deep breaths, and I'm going to go ahead and take my test, and I will make another video later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.